Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, now, hey, now, don't dream it, hey, babe. What do you think of this? Yeah. Okay, first of all, I know I'm a cocaine dealer look right now, but what do you think of this? I got a, a dog tag with the kids' initials on it. You think that's good, not good? Because I got Jasmine the same one, but hers is silver, and it has the kids' birthstones in it. But do you think it's a good idea? Was this, did I, did I not do something right? right? Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, when did you conceive the idea? Was it your own idea? Did you see an ad for someone doing this? Did you? I saw in the Jonah Hill movie, the one that he did on Andy Netflix. Murphy? With Eddie Murphy, yeah. I saw that he was wearing a dog tag yeah. in one of the one of the uh, scenes, and I said, I like dog tags because I've never fought in the Army, but I like to think I'm in the Army of God. I like to think I'm defending the state of New York at all times, and I thought I'm also defending my family. So I said, what better thing? You're always at war, potentially. Exactly. Or I'm at war with my emotions. Sometimes I'm at war with my with my gut health. Right. So I said, I am not necessarily a soldier in the United States Army, but I am a soldier in other things. So I, I do qualify to wear a dog tag. Wear podcast wars. Yes. So I said, what about the dog tag? What the thing that's not going to change about me? What are, what are things that are always going to mean something to me? Um, and I said, the kids. So I said, TDV, the kids' names. Yeah. And I gave it to Jasmine, and she liked it. She really did. You're going, you're skipping ahead. Okay, let's, let's get you to that. You watched the Eddie Murphy movie with Jonah Hill. Yes. And then you had the idea, and then you you thought of the idea of the dog tags and their initials, and you went to- A, a jewelry d- store. That you go to normally? No, that I got my watch from. I went. I got you custom-made jewelry. I, I just remember this. Oh, yeah. yeah I got you the Playboy uh, nameplate. Chrissy. Yeah, the Playboy nameplate. Yeah, it's amazing. Right. Yeah, right. I still so, have it. Yeah, with the like the spades yeah. on it and the thing. Yeah, right. that's what we wore. That's what all the like the Guido kid. That's what the kids wore in, oh, when yeah. I was younger. I have over it. there turtlenecks with their Cavaricis. That exact name. You either had one or you didn't. Or you didn't, and, and you did. And, have and people one. wanted. I never got one. But I have one. From but I got own. it when you were doing the. You gave it to me in Vegas when you were doing the um, Italian boys, the ba- 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 Bay Ridge boys, ba- 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 <sighs> Bay Ridge boys with Giannis. The Backstreet Boys. When you were doing that with Giannis, I was like, "Oh, this is so. This is so." Yeah. And I got those custom made. It took months. Yeah. And I and I I I think it was probably a misguided gift. Right. Because I I was more excited about it than I think it, than it ended up being, and it took time and effort. I don't think it was worth it in the end because I don't think that. I don't know. I don't think. That I, well, the reason why I don't wear it because it genuinely doesn't fit around my neck. But I could get more links to make it fit around my oh, neck. Oh, because the chain itself. Right. But I yeah, have I it. I just got I, you the charm. But I have it. I don't yeah. know. But I, I'm not. I didn't take note of if you wore it. I have no idea if you did. But even even Giannis, I just don't think you guys wore them. It's a shame. But um, so so my point is, I had to search out who still made those custom. So you just Googled something. I, I, you walked I, into a store. I walked into the jewelry store. Good people there, and I and I walked in and I said, "Can you make this they, is a brick and mortar place?" Yeah, they All said, right. "What's the inspiration?" I said, "Jonah Hill in the Netflix movie with Eddie Murphy," and I had a screenshot of it. And you if you did? Google, if you Google I Jonah mean, Hill dog tag, it pops up. But you, I mean, it's just a dog tag. Why'd you take a screenshot of the? I don't know what okay. I was thinking. Okay. Um, you know what's crazy? I was cleaning my house. I was cleaning my closet. Uh, I'm sorry, mama. mama. I never meant, meant to hurt, hurt you. I, I never meant, meant to make you cry, but tonight I'm cleaning out my hay, babe. Um, and I, I actually found my grandfather's dog tags from the war that I had in my drawer, and I held, I held his dog tag from two, the United States Army in World War II. Correct, and I held it in my hand two days ago only. Why and did I you said, throw oh. that on? Um, I sh- I thought about it. It's 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 broken where it connects to the where like a chain would go through. But I guess I could have it fixed. And it's much smaller than this. This is too big of that, a plate. It's not gold. Actually, this one is like a hard plastic or something right. like that. Um, but, right. Yeah. But I just I had th- thoughts of dog tags just two days ago. Because I what I realized is is doing it this way. Number one, it's a little big. It, it, am I wearing a license plate? Number two. The one that I got for Jasmine with the kids' birthstones, because it goes down this way. Same thing, but silver. Same thing. Does it look like a stoplight? Surprised her? Yeah. So on hers, it has three stones. With the ki- the kids' birthstones to match the T, D, and the V. Oh, so you have a T, D, and a V on hers. Yes. But with birthstones. Yes, with their children's birthstones. How did you decide on silver versus gold for, at all? She's more silver. Um... You know, it's surprised. You surprised her. Surprised, which is nice, which is the way to go. Did you came home with something wrapped? Yes. 
They wrapped it up for me. And this was a just because gift. Just because. And when did you give it to her? I gave it to her about a week ago. Take me through that moment. You came she, home? I came home. Were you excited? I came home. I was excited. You had it in a little bag? I had it in a little bag. It was late, though. I, got, I, got, I picked up the gift at about 4 p.m. I didn't get home till about 10, 30, 11. So the kids were asleep. Everybody was asleep. Okay. Jasmine was asleep. But I thought... She was. She was. You thought this was grounds for a wake-up? Yes. So I didn't necessarily wake her up with my hands or any physical activity. I got a toothbrush, like a motorized toothbrush, that I brought, started brushing my teeth in the bedroom, not in the bathroom. I thought so you were going to say you started brushing hers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and she was fine with that? Okay. So she started listening. Is it she, motorized? <laughs> or ele sonic? Electric? Electric, yeah. yeah motorized, right. <laughs> like a motorized wheelchair, but a toothbrush. All right. So, so she, she woke up. Yeah, she woke up, and then she woke up, and she of and course like, woke oh. up. She goes, "Why are you brushing your teeth in the bedroom?" And I was like, "Oh, I didn't mean to wake you up. Sorry." And she goes, "Yes, mm -hmm. you did. You were brushing your teeth in the bedroom." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry." I was like, "While you're up, though," I said, and I pulled this out, and I swear to God, her first thing she was like. Those are the kids' initials. I was like, yeah. She goes, it looks like a license plate. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so right away, just <laughs> you're like, well, I got news for you. Yeah. So I said, I said, I don't think it does. It's a dog tag. And then she goes, why would you get a dog tag with the kids' initials? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. And then I was oh, like, that's terrible. And I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, well, here's yours. And then she was like, you want me to open this now? And I was like, yeah, just open it quick. And she's like, okay. So she opens it and she goes, she looked at it and she goes, oh, this is the same as yours, except mine has the birdstones. And I was like, yeah. I was like, do you, do you like it? Like, be honest. I was like, I can take it back. And she was like, how could you take it back? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I got She goes How did the conversation <laughs> <is there>? <laughs> <laughs> She goes oh, shit. How can you take it back? It's customized. <laughs> And I go, I swear to God, I go, I go, I guess you're right. I, I can't I can't <laughs> <laughs> Give my wife the f receipt. <laughs> Give my wife the f oh yeah, I think you should leave. He go oh, you're feeling inside. I was literally dying inside because I spent a good amount of money on this. Oh, God. And I, and she goes and she goes, You can't take it back, it's customized. Oh, God. And I go, Oh yeah, I didn't think of that. And she goes, oh. It's fine, it's fine. She goes, just leave it on the dresser. I said, You don't want to put it on? She goes, I'm just, I'm just going back to sleep. Oh. And I said, All right, but you'll wear it tomorrow. She goes, Yeah. Oh. And then I swear to God, she comes back, she comes back with it on. Like, you know, because she first of all, she came down the stairs the next morning without it on and I, I had it on and, right. and and by the way when you walk with this it, sweet. it clinks it yeah. like clinks it's very heavy yeah yeah so she comes so she comes back <laughs> with it on and you know she comes back she doesn't have it on and then she comes back down the stairs and she hears this clinking and my middle daughter she goes because you know like Scrooge you've seen the movie Scrooge oh sure the yeah. shackles the shackles so my, my daughter goes she hears the, she just hears this coming down the stairs she can't see and she's like this eating her own and she goes Jacob Marley's in the house <laughs> <laughs> and she said Jacob yeah, Marley yeah, because she goes Jacob Marley is the oh, one was, and then and I said oh no don't worry and, and then and then she goes oh do you like it whatever and then my my daughter you know like like like, you know, like looking at it, she goes, oh, she goes, TDV, like, you know, my brother and me and them and whatever. And then she goes, um, and then she goes, well, wait a second. She goes, my birthstone's not clear. I got the wrong birthstone no. for the, yeah, so. Your fault or their fault? Their fault. Okay. Uh, my fault. Well, because now you got a reason to return it. Well, I well, they got to replace it. They're going to replace the stone. Let me ask you a question, please. by the way. Well, yes, actually, no, no, no. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, their fault. It was, it was my fault, but it's all good. Um, um, uh. Let me ask you a question, though. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. So we talked about my watch. I yeah. bought the uh, the watch, the the AP watch. Remember, we I wore it in here before. Ah. Uh, the Audemars Puget. Puget. Okay. I bought the watch. Cash. cash. How much cash? Good money. Yeah. Yeah. Is this your one? Is this your, is this your one? Is this the top watch in top. the rotation? It's it's not even it's close. The only watch I have. It's the only watch you have, and you bought it from these people too? Yes. Okay. Great people. <laughs> but let me ask you, the watch, which I spend shout out on, they, 
it, 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 the time and date don't have not, they worked <laughs> and now they don't, con- they consistently have not worked. Is it a self winding watch? Which I've self wound, which they've self wound, they've demagnetized. It doesn't work. It, oh, I leave and then it doesn't work. So now what they've done is they've taken the watch and they've mailed it back to AP, which is going to take five to six weeks to get back. Because there's something wrong with it? Because there, there must be. But my but question. It's warranty. Right. But my question should is, and I didn't do this because I'm just never think of it, but just as, as I have you here, should I have asked for a replacement watch in the interim or for something? I'm not the guy that usually does that. But if you pay, if you pay, would you, and it the watch, I've only had the watch two months and it's already messed up. What would your course of action be? Because um, I assume they're going to send the it's going to be fixed. Alone or watch? It's I don't know. Alone or watch is not the is thing. Like asked a, for. It's not like a car dealership, right? So if it's just it's defective, it's defective. What can you do? Defective. I think it's a defective. You get a full refund. It's got to be. Right. That has to be. My question is with the watch of this caliber. When you send it out, how do you know you're not getting back a fake? Because they're sending it. Because the people I got it from, I trust, and they are sending it to actual AP. They are an actual AP okay, boutique okay. dealership. L- look at the things on screen. Nobody sees these but us. Okay. Yes. It, it's uh, tell me, it's the, tell me like somewhere in the neighborhood of which well, is four different price points here. It's the middle one. That's that's which where one? It's the second neighborhood. one. Yes, that one there. That yeah, one. It, that's not the watch, but that's about what it costs. That's the watch. That's the watch, and that's what it costs pre-owned. No, no, that's oh no, well, that says pre-owned. That's the price for pre-owned. Oh no, no, no. So then that no, no, no. So then I'm <laughs> I'm mine costs pre-owned that what this one the first one Royal Royal Oak. That's pre- what I have pre-owned. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm no, sorry. I bought it at face value. I bought it at retail. Okay. New. New. It, as soon as you leave, as soon as, uh, uh, on the secondary market, it doubles in value. Doubles. Why would anyone buy anything off the secondary market? Because people just want the watch. And the thing is, you can't have, get the access to these watches unless you know someone to get in. That's why they're very clear. If you resell this watch without them and you don't go through, like if I bought that watch, Right, I have a, a great connect now. If I bought that watch and I resold it, black market because I'm going to get twice the value. Right. If I just left the store, if I left the store and I paid ten grand for it, I could go out and get twenty grand for it immediately. But I'm the guy that's like, I want that watch. Why am I going to you and not buying it? Because new? you don't have access to the guys to get in to get it at retail. But how did you get access? You walked into a store and asked for it? No, no, no. You can't, that's the thing. It's not that kind of store. You got to get buzzed in. There's a guy with a machine gun at the door. I swear to God. Okay. They're, they're, that's the thing. I got in through uh, Andrew Santino gave me a connect who got a connect from like, it's that. It's like okay. a, so they it's think like getting it, into Rayos. Exactly. So if you sell the watch yeah. behind their back, you are out of that community. You will never get anything at face like, value They're like again. the Amish in that way. Exa- they are like the Amish or the Hasidic right. Jews, okay. which is more close. Okay. So that, so, so that's the thing. It's like, I'm in this community so and, and now I, these people but now you got the date don't work it don't, it don't work so what would you do in my sitch would you ask for something what would you do well what they're telling you is you're going to get the watch you ordered in pristine working condition back in about five weeks right but now i don't have a watch that i paid money for yes that like events and stuff so what would you throw it on a credit card i threw it on a credit card and then you got the points for that i got the points oh yeah, yeah. Just paid it off. Paid it off. I, t- I, I my <laughs> taking my family to Orlando this week. A nice little vacation, which we'll talk about. Use the points from that watch. Buy buy the flights. Okay. Okay. So, but but you can't ask for it. You think it's just it's just part of the game. You want to no, be I, you want to buy what, a watch at that price. You're, what would happen. you ask for? That's the thing. What could I ask for? What there's nothing I could even ask oh, for. Like because it's going to come back to you in working condition. Right. So, so you you have a you have a you can attach a monetary value to your inconvenience. Do right. they deal in inconveniences? I mean, the guy has a machine gun. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I can't. And what if the FedEx truck gets like hit by an asteroid? There's got to be. I have sure to have. I think I have. I have insurance on the watch. I took out an insurance policy yeah. with a. If something happened or a force de majeure. Yeah. I, I have. Or in the house, you have. You have to. You have to list that in your house insurance. Yeah, I have it. I have okay, that. So okay. if God forbid it got stolen, I. Yeah. I have. I have the value of it. Okay. Not the secondary value. The initial value. Right. So. Yeah, but. You can make a case that the secondary value is the value. Right. They're going to give you what you initially paid for. It, I, I mean, look that. at this. Look at this Royal Oak Offshore 18 carat white, $1.3 million. How That's did you not, choose this brand and that's that the specific? the exact watch I have. The exact one. How did you choose it? 
uh, San Andrew, the great Andrew Santino, who's a who's you know known watch guy. No, yes. he he was like, you got this is a watch for you. You got to get this watch, and I saw it in person, loved it, um, loved it. Now, I have I have one one ex, I would call very expensive watch. It's not that expensive. Just to me, it's expensive because prior to this, my watches were all between like fifty and five hundred dollars. Right. in my entire life. By the um, way, I don't have any other watch but that watch. Yeah. I, I'm not a watch guy. Well, I bought I, it once. I like the way I feel. I don't know that I'm going to continue to do it. Well, that's what I was going to ask you because the watch I got that I think is expensive is significantly less than that. Do you have any hesitation throwing that on about wh where you're going with it? No, because the reason someone why... someone could be like, break yourself fool. Exactly, but the reason why I like that watch over, say, like, a flashy Rolex is because when you see a Rolex, it's very well known. It's very known, like, gold Rolex, that's a lot of money. The average everyday guy gotta be doesn't know that that's a very expensive watch. It could be a watch that you got at the mall. Nonetheless, though, is your guard None up? Huh? Is your guard up? Like you're not gonna well, take my guard's always with that up. On? My guard's always up. When I'm walking, when I'm walking through yeah. anywhere, I'm always you're always ready to. I'm always to like juke, this. Shake, I always have this. I'm right, always right. I'm always clock. If yeah, you yeah. see, I'm always like if I walk up to anybody in the street, I'm like that. Right. Yeah. So or I'm throwing crane kicks. I'm doing something. So <laughs> I'm always you're already like, thrown. Them. I'm so it's not like you're in the stance. Ask anybody who's known seen me in the streets. If you see me, if I'm waiting, I'm ap actively throwing crane kicks yeah. just so you know that you don't want to get close. That's nice, especially when my family's there. That I have to. A crane kick is a, is the best kick to do a lot in a row because it's, <laughs> yeah. you have to reset. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like I, you know, also in the Karate Kid because that's what we all learned, which about I've never seen. It, it, I swear to God, <laughs> I've never seen the Karate Kid. I've never You're seen insane. the new one on YouTube. I've never seen no, it. But the Karate Kid, a ridge, I've just never seen one? it. Nope. Wow. So when did you learn about the crane kick? I, because what I did was we did a uh, like a like a spoof on it with Artie Lang in like 2012, okay. and one of the, I was playing the I was playing the Karate Kid guy, and they had me do a crane kick. Question: Is the crane kick real, or did the crane kick was made for that scene in the Karate Kid? And then let me give you another thing after, I, after we find this out. It's fictionalized version of the May Toby Jerry. The move was created by Daryl Vidal for the classic film. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, it, it, it was created it for the movie. Created. Okay, so can you go back to the picture of him? Now, what happens here is, guys, this podcast, as you know, is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether you're feeling or dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate your life so you can move forward with the confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Now, So, tell us. if you are thinking of starting therapy... Why not give BetterHelp a try? Well, it's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. So you just go and you fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time with no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash HeyBabe today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash HeyBabe. Let's talk HelloFresh with HelloFresh. America's Hello number one meal kit. It's America's number one meal kit with HelloFresh. You get... Farm fresh pre portioned ingredients. You understand? Yes. Seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store. You count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, affordable. That's why it is America's number one meal kit. Make your home the hangout place this summer with crowd pleasing eats from a backyard bratwurst bar Ooh. to tangy key lime pie. HelloFresh Market makes summer entertaining a cinch. Are you looking to eat well this summer? I know I am. HelloFresh menu features calorie smart and protein smart lunch and dinner options, plus new vegan dinners to choose from. HelloFresh makes it easier to reach your food goals and flavorful recipes that leave you feeling satisfied. Uh, it's fun to get it in the mail too. It comes in a brown bag. I you open it. it up. Everything's pre-portioned. They have a recipe card. It actually makes cooking fun. It really does. It really That's does. coming from someone who does not cook. Here's what you got to do. You got to go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe50 and use the code HeyBabe50 for 50% off plus Free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe50. Use the code HeyBabe50 for 50% 5 off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's, America's number, number one meal kit. kit. Here's what I'm saying to you here. Now, this is the movie. So in the movie, Daniel yeah. LaRusso right. is, a, is a kid from... Uh, New Jersey. He's from Jersey. Yeah. He's like from Secaucus or something. Because I knew that from the from the spoof. And they relocate to like, like uh, Northern California or something like that. And then he goes into this high school, and 
he rubs elbows the wrong way with Johnny, who is basically uh, the the leader of this group of friends that all take karate. Right. He ends up having a relations. Uh, he 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 flirts with Johnny's girlfriend, who's Elizabeth Shue. Right. Which nobody blames him. Who and who is who is has no uh, correlation or no direct lineage to the shoe fly, fly pie. No. Right. And uh, and then so they beat the piss out of him. And then he finds Mr. Miyagi, and Mr. Miyagi takes him under his wing. He teaches him, and they end up uh, culminating in this big tournament that comes through. Okay. And then he's making his way through the tournament, and it's no no mercy really with this right. other, with this other with this other dojo. There's no mercy. Right. So they they do, underhanded anything that it takes to win. You right. understand. Right. Right. And now this is the final, literal final bout of the final scene of the tournament of the movie, right? You're the guy on the left. Not you, but let's say you're the guy on the left. And this is exactly a freeze frame. How do you not know that something's coming your way? <laughs> you, you're telling me yeah. that even if you didn't know karate, your antenna doesn't come up that if I walk forward, something's about to happen. Yeah. He's literally looking up on my face. Does he nail people with this in the movie? No, he only does it this time. So also it's like, well, what is this now? Did, yeah. He wasn't doing it. you know. So but he like, floors this guy with this. He goes, ha! And then he runs and he kicks him in the face and he goes down. He runs right into his foot, which but he's literally cocked waiting to do it. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, I. I don't. Um. You. Not, he. You look up and you, you you bump into someone on the street and you're like, bro, watch it. And you turn around and the guy is like, look this, looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this person's crazy? This person knows no, something I, I, I don't I'd, know. I back up. You'd be like, I don't understand this, and so I'm gonna back away from this. I right? back the you hell away. You know what's waiting for you right here? No idea. Yeah. You know it's waiting for you. No, I have no idea. Well, he ran right into that thing. Right into it. Yeah. But but you see what I mean, though? If you kept doing that in succession, it'd be really funny because you have to keep getting into that first position. Like, yeah. By the way, recently, your dad bothering Ralph Macchio at the Mets game was my favorite thing. Ralph, Ralph Macchio, we brought my dad to the Mets game, <laughs> and my dad, we were in uh, an area where Ralph Macchio was there, and my dad started talking to Ralph Macchio and wouldn't leave Ralph Macchio alone, right? Oh, Is that wow. what it was? What, what did he say? He just kept he kept rooting there? for the Yankees. Were you there? To, yeah, right. to Ralph Macchio was rooting for the Mets, but he thought they were on the same side. It was really uncomfortable. I loved it. Yeah, it was great. Was he in a, like a box or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. And eventually Ralph moved away. It was you, Tampa yeah. Tony's the man. Tampa Tony's That's the man. So funny, <laughs> Ralph. Yeah. You know when I saw Karate Kid, I saw it at the Highland Twin. Okay. And I came still, out still there. Long gone. Right. Long. It was a two. It was a two movie screen thing back in like the late eighties. And I saw it with my dad, and I came out, and it was like when you saw Rocky. You came out, and you were like, I probably know karate now. Right. And I, I remember we were walking to the car, and we were walking along the storefronts, and then there was a section of brick wall, and I threw a crane kick at the brick wall, just like, <laughs> <laughs> just fully spontaneous. Yeah. I just was like, that wasn't me and my dad. Like, that was amazing. I just threw a crane kick against the brick wall. I kicked it, and I literally broke my goddamn toe. No, like actual toe break for real. No, but it, 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 it just, just, <laughs> it, it just, just feel like it, like it felt broken. Like you were, you were screaming. You were yeah, like pain. I thought I was gonna like kick it, and and I didn't, and I kicked it straight dead on with the toe, <laughs> and I literally was like, like literally, basically crying. Right. Right at, after I walked out of Karate Kid. Right. <laughs> You're <just> hysterical, <laughs> I right. crane kicked the brick wall. Yeah. 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 People that do that are, because it, 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 it all happens. Like I saw Fast and the Furious with my friends when we were 16, 17 years old. And then my friend made believe <laughs> he was driving like Tokyo Drift, but we were in like a 1991 Toyota Corolla. Yeah. Like, so it's like not on the Whitestone Expressway. Yeah. So it's like not doing anything. No. But people definitely get hurt. I bet you that happens more than we think. People get so psyched up with movies that they get hurt immediately the most dangerous time during a movie is the hour when it's over yeah, because I walked somebody's out gonna of, act like that the last time it happened to me i walked out of a record room for a dream in the parking lot i started double that's what yeah. just right just spontaneous as you have to yeah because i was like i can of, do that what about the time we saw brokeback mountain together we were <laughs> <at> each other's <laughs> on the ferry <laughs> sponsors just sponsors uh, yeah 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 that's so each, yeah you should put suck at each other's hello freshers <laughs> <laughs> you should always put the name of a sponsor over any type of curse we should do that pick a sponsor seriously pip mark that i'm being serious pick a different spot oh, that's so that funny show. that's yeah. so funny to do that that's so funny like yeah. that yeah. mother hello fresh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um um yeah yeah, so uh, you, do you remember in, when I was younger, the movies were much more communal in a way that people, like I saw Rocky 3. 
Okay. In the Lane Theater on New Rope Lane with my dad. Okay. And Which he, was a comedy club at one point. Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. It then became, later on, became the Lane Theater. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and now it's not. Now it's now I think it's a church, like a, a Jehovah's Witness church or something. Not a Jehovah's Witness. A, uh, you know, Jesus it, it Christ of Latter-day Saints. It used to be a proper huge theater. Yeah, it became, like, it became Uncle Vinny's Staten Island Comedy Club. Oh, I thought it was, okay. I'm thinking of Grandpa's. That was on the, uh, just up a block of you. It was, you know, Grandpa from the Munsters? Yeah. He had a comedy club in Santa Island called Grandpa's Comedy Club. What? And his monster head was on the door. What? Yeah, I saw Dice there. On New Door Plain? Yeah, no, on uh, the service road, the, uh, on the uh, service road where the train is, the Staten Island train. Oh, like south. Just, just, just right up the, I mean, literally up the block from Uncle Vinny's. Wh- where, when, do, when was Grandpa's there? It was like uh, 80s, 90s. Can you Google Grandpa's Comedy Club, Staten Island? That's fascinating to yeah, me. Yeah, and it, I don't know why that man had a comedy club, but. And Dice Clay performed there yeah. after he was already humongous. Yeah, he was big. It was a big thing, I think. When did it close, would you say? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, maybe he was a comic? He must have been a comic. Al Lewis. Right, Al Lewis. Yeah. Grandpa, it closed what, in the 90s, you think? Or even before? Well, maybe I didn't, I, I was there, multi, no, you know what it was? Because I remember when I went there, I was underage. Uh, because okay. they let you go underage, and we would go with, like, friends, and they we would drink virgin drinks or whatever, like, they would drink, like, a whipped cream drink or whatever. <coughs> Dice was there. I didn't see. I'm thinking of another time I saw Dice, but Dice w- did play there, and everybody like it was. It was nuts. It, it was like in him coming. He was big because I remember it was a huge thing. It was like in the paper, and everybody was like everybody like crowded around outside and stuff. Right, right. Wow, that's yeah. Comedy Staten Island is. Uh, I have an announcement. There's a po- possibility. There's a possibility. I might be moving off Staten Island. <sighs> You are yo-yo, you're yo-yoing, yo-yoing. you're walking the dog right now. I can't even keep up. Let's. I just want to talk to you about owning a house versus owning an apartment, or living in a house versus living in an apartment. I am realizing, although I love the island de Statan, I love all the culture, I love the people, all those stereotypes you hear. I don't see it, I don't feel it, and even when I do see it and feel it, I love it anyway because I'm like, this is culture. I love these people. It's not, it has nothing to do with that. It's that if you had, if you had me running, trying to maintain a house anywhere, any other, I, it, it's very, it's becoming very difficult for me. Uh, the not being able to walk anywhere is becoming very difficult for Running me. Running a house is not self-sustaining once you get the kinks worked out. Right? It is, but you have to pay people to do that. And no, 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 no. Even if you don't pay people to do it, I, I, Sal, I'm telling you, and, and it may be because I'm a very novice homeowner, it, something is needs to be maintained or breaks or fixed or upkept every week. Something, 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 something. You have to do something. Mm. The gutters, the boiler, the Uh. pool, the backyard, the landscaping, the inside house, something breaks. You're on the line to fix it. You have to, and I don't know how to do that. I have to call a guy to do it. Now I said, let me get motivated. Let me learn how to do it. Let me YouTube things, all that stuff. I've been doing it. It's not sitting right with me. I'm like, now Jasmine is as handy. Jasmine's handier than our dads. Like Jasmine literally can build a house. Does she feel the same way that you do about? Yes. She feels, she's like, I don't, she's like, I feel like, like, for example, today, she's like, I'm, you know, we're here doing the show. I'm like, what are you going to do? And she goes, it gets like, you know, and it's not her fault. It's like, I get it. She's like, well, I have to do all the kids' laundry. I have to clean this whole house. I have to uh, clean the pool. I, she has all these chores to do because the house consumes you. It consumes everything about you. Where if we lived in an apartment, yes, it'd be the kids would lose the pool and the yard, but we figured, you know, we could go to a pool or a yard or we could get them out into the park, whatever. We don't have to maintain as much. And then when something breaks, it's really not your responsibility. It's the super. Understood. So you had these thoughts a couple of months ago. Yes. And then you flipped. Flipped right back. And then you flipped. Because I changed from Ozempic to Munjaro. Okay. No, okay. no, no, right. no I understand. No, I'm, no, no. So, so, so now you're flipping no, again. I'm flipping but again. Why, Let's flip why, this house. Why? Let's what, flip this house. What happened when you flipped When you felt that way and flipped back, what happened to those feelings? So those feelings, what happened was, is when I flipped back, because really, let's be honest, you're only going to be, it's whatever the woman wants. I don't care how much we say, you know, uh, it's the man's world. It's it's whatever the woman wants. James Brown sang that song. Right. Shout out James Brown. That's a woman that I want. Mm. The, 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 uh, it's whatever she wants. And now my woman has said, you know what? 
I, as, as I'm getting a little sick of, I feel like I'm now becoming a suburban housewife. I'm becoming now a person who my whole life is for this house. Okay. She's like, I don't like it. I don't feel like I'm out in the community at all because don't forget when we take the kids to school, you guys are big in the community. We're big community people. We're, we're, we, I want to be a pillar. I'd like to be a pillar. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so you're not going to be able to be a pillar when you're standing, when you're kind of on a, on a hill by yourself. Right now I'm in a hiller and I, I'm a hiller and I want to be a pillar. You do. You, you want to like get your, you want to roll up your sleeves and be a pillar of your community. For my example, the perfect day would be a day like if we were living somewhere else, take the kids to school, walk them already. I want to be by 9 a.m. I want to have casually my 5,000 steps cash. I'm just walking around. Yeah. I love that. That's your butt. We had that in Bay Ridge. We would cat. I mean, uh, ten thousand steps by lunchtime. Right. No problem. So steps is where you. Steps is what I'm thinking about. Right. I'm thinking about. I have, and we've been looking, and I have a pedometer on me at all times. Just thinking about <laughs> how many steps would I get in and out of this house. But I a perfect day because what happens is, is you know how it goes. Yeah. Is I got to drive, sit in traffic on Staten Island to take to get the kids to school. I got my pedometer. I'll let you know how much I walked in the okay. last week. I got to get, you know, the kids get on the bus, yeah. school bus, which is fine, which is fine. Let them get on the school bus, whatever. But they, you know, but then the baby, we got to take her to daycare, 20 minutes, come back 20 minutes. Can't really go. We can't really leave Staten Island because the kids are going to be home by a certain time. So, so, so if we're going to leave Staten Island during the week, you got to leave. You got to get everything you got to get done within the hour. If you got to come to the city or do anything, you got everything you got to get done between the hours of 11 to 1 because it's going to take an hour and a half to get back. It takes an hour and a half to get into the city because you know the traffic. Yeah. So we kind of feel like if we were more centrally located, we could have, we feel like our friends who have children our age that live in other parts of, of uh, not on Staten Island are living their life doing lifestyle. everything. And we're just getting sent videos of what we're missing because we have the beautiful house, a much more beautiful house than they do, but they're living a more quality life. And we're, I'm not now, I'm not equating money anymore to square footage i'm equating it more to community and i feel like on Island, it's beautiful people but i i for us we want to be in the thick of it i understand you know i'm going through this 100 percent identical thing right same exact conversation but you're born and raised on staten island and there my friend lies the difference but that's does, what i think but there is no difference because i have no family on staten island anymore mm-hmm. there's nothing keeping me there what about your mama my mama gone. My oh, mama, she don't live on Saturday. My mama in New Jersey now. Okay, I didn't yeah. know. So, um, so there's no one keeping me there per se. Okay. Uh, my lady's family is there, and some of her friends are still there. So that's that's fine because I. I uh, interact with both of those. But your lady is also open to the idea of leaving Staten Island. Well, we were because we were looking at homes. Yes. And we were about to like really pull a trigger there, and then there was some hesitation with some things, and so we had a second to think, and we had the same debate like do we want access and energy and constant like you know like out the door and you're right in the thick of it kind of thing and if you do you're gonna have to sacrifice a yard possibly a pool a basement you know multiple bedrooms for people to come visit you this so we had to try and weigh because i was coming off the pandemic and i always thought i was moving to the to the city of brooklyn to maybe like a townhouse or an apartment you thought for sure after the pandemic was over you're off the island i was like i'm gonna move to the the west village or like brooklyn 100 percent. that's what i thought yeah or buy or buy a house or build a house whatever but we but then the pandemic hit and i was like no no we want a yard we want to be able to like you know we want to be able to have all those amenities at home and not have to go anywhere but that was i was ptsd from the pandy sure but uh, and then and so now we were headed Hurricane to, Pandy. Yeah, and then and then we yeah. went to uh, we went and looked at all these apartments. Right in the city, and, and nothing, nothing. You didn't you didn't like any of them. What you was know, the, What was turning you away from them? I took the budget that I was going to use on a home, and I applied the budget in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's it's yeah. You got to have you, it's tough because if you want everything the, the you want in Brooklyn, Manhattan, you need plummets. like a ten million dollar place. The square footage plummets. Right. And it's like, all right, yes. Can I walk out of my house and be right at the cellar? Can I walk out of my house and be right at all these restaurants and shops and things like that in Brooklyn and good energy? Yes. Then I go back into my house and do I feel like, you okay, know. Okay, yes, I understand that. Is, I understand is it my that. castle? But my, my counterpoint is, is, is from living it right now is I think that, yeah, we're going to talk about threads in a second. Fastest social media platform ever to surpass 100 million users. It's, it's like Facebook's answer to Twitter, Meta's answer to Twitter. 
threads. Okay. So, so um, um, yeah, I have one. I have one. I'm on there at Thready Roosevelt. So For I. Real? No, but I told my guy who runs my social media to tweet out, I'm Thready Roosevelt. I don't know if he did. Okay. Um, uh, that might be the name, though. Maybe we should, I should actually probably be the name Thready Roosevelt. Should, yeah, let me, I'm going to be Thread Durst. You're going to be Thread Durst? Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me just, yeah. I should tell him, like, make sure. Uh, make Do we sure have to go, you just, like, you just log on and make one? Yes. Do we really want another one? Yeah, I, we, we uh, have a Hey Babe and Taste Buds thread. We do? It's, it's um, you just log into Instagram, press two buttons, and you have a thread. Wait, let me just hold out. Can uh, we pause oh, this? Is that one the thing now I'm seeing like at nine two one zero five? Let me just see if the food's here. Hold on. What is they, that? They give you like a social security number for their thing. But, but okay, and what's going on? It's just, just is it just? It's just um, pretty it's much feed? they're uh, pre-gaming their physical fight with a fight of platforms. So this is Mark Zuckerberg being petty and launching his own Twitter as a f to Elon Musk. So is the is the, I don't know if you've seen what Elon Musk has been doing on Twitter to Mark Zuckerberg. No, it's insane. I haven't. And he, what is he um, doing? Well, today he wants an actual d measuring contest, and he's down to be measured. If Zuckerberg will be measured. Well, I mean, that's so silly. Like, any professional <laughs> any professional person, he just looks ridiculous. Like, Mark Zuckerberg doesn't even have to, like, I wouldn't even, like, it's, but why, though? What, what's going on between them? Why? I think it's just a battle of the bigger. Yeah. Oh, Zuckerberg and Musk. They're fighting. Zuckerberg I, is a jujitsu expert, though, so you don't want to really mess with Zuckerberg. I think he might beat up Musk. Um, I didn't hear any of this, so they have static. But can I ask you, what is what is the point of threat? Is it exactly what Twitter is? Yeah, you pretty post, much exactly. You post stuff and it just a feed? As of right now, it's in it's, in its infancy, wait, so wait. who knows what it'll become. But it's Instagram if Instagram is Twitter. Did Elon Musk just retweet Theo Vaughn? If, yeah, yeah. Because what's going on with, is there something Theo going Vaughn's on? Theo Vaughn's podcast with Roseanne got ripped and Musk is hosting it on Twitter. Got it. Okay, good. Theo Vaughn's podcast with Roseanne mm -hmm. got ripped down off from YouTube. Ah, uh, I YouTube. see. And that is owned by Facebook? Uh, no, Google. So what is... Musk so is Musk just, is uh, saying oh, Zuckerberg has nothing to do with this. No, no, that's a separate uh, and then, incident. And he ripped down why? Uh, Roseanne said something crazy about the Holocaust as a joke. It was a bit. Okay. But Musk now, I think with Musk and Twitter, you can now put our, like you can put your entire podcast if fully you pay, up. If you pay them, yeah. Right, right. What? You can now put your entire podcast on Twitter. You don't have to. It used to be whatever. What was it? My two, three minute clips. Yeah. Now you clip. can put like if we want to put our entire hour episode out on Twitter as a video. We could do that. Can we or your whole special it? or your whole special. Can we backlog it? I don't know if you want to spam it. I don't know. I don't know if it helps you. At what all. The, I think what the debate is happening now is I mean, thread just, is for the good guys, Twitter's for the bad guys, right? Is that what the narrative the media is trying to push? Okay. So you meaning you could just post an hour long video? Is that what you mean? Yeah, you can post more than that. Piece. You can post like you can post Anything. like what YouTube does. Okay, right? They have the same bandwidth. It's just no ads. Right. Which, no ads. Okay. All right. I mean, so it's something that we could think about. Um, but let me ask you this, Sal. Yeah, I got. I mean, I have like things to do. Like, who is? What is all this? Nonsense? Well, listen. To get away. <laughs> I, I, doesn't everybody have like things to do? Yeah, right. It's just so much of this nonsense. Like it's a lot. I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm not joking, dude. I want, I want to be Amish, maybe. Why? Like I, I, I am busy from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. I got a real life shit going on. Yeah, dude. Like, how about this? I had enough of this. Like social I, media. I think that, and I think that a lot of people now. Um, I think like you. Babe, I got a brand new hour of stand-up material. I'm filming a special for it in December, so come see it live before then. We got Atlantic City, New Jersey, the Borgata, August 18th, 19th, September 5th and 6th, Irvine, California, September 8th, Portland, September 9th, Seattle, and then, of course, September 22nd and 23rd, we have Radio City Music Hall in New York City and the theater at MSG, um, and then September 30th is Las Vegas, Nevada, and then all my October, November, December dates are at chrisdcomedy.com. Get ticky wickies. What's up, guys? You got one last weekend to see the Impractical Jokers' first leg of the tour uh, July next week, July 27, 28, 29. We're in Nashville, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. ImpracticalJokersLive.com. The second leg of the tour is not happening until January or so in 2024. In January, speaking of, January 2024 is the Impractical Jokers cruise that we are throwing with Eric Andre. The cruise is going to be insane. It's the fifth one. If you've been on it, I know I'll see you. If you've never been on it, you got to come. It's a once-in-a-lifetime party. You can get uh, signed up at Get Shipfaced 
cruise.com and then your boy right now is filming a special in december in chicago and my tour kicks off in two weeks uh and i'm gonna be all over town go to Savile Cano comedy Dot com for tickets. We're starting off with just uh, Hartford, uh, Syracuse, and Albany Funny Bones. And then we are moving along to Bowling Green and uh, Illinois and um, so on and so forth. Just check it out. It'll, it's all out now. And uh, I don't even know. I think there was a pre sale. I don't have all the information, but if you just go to salvocanocomedy.com, you, you can locate everything and then buy some merch. I got merch. Tastemate's got merch. Uh, uh, hey Baby has merch. I'm done talking. How about this? You ready for this? I heard this on the Daily uh, Stoic podcast, and I'm going to pose this question to you. I pose it to Pimp Off Air. They said, he said that his, his, Ryan Holiday said that he heard a quote, or maybe this is his own definition, I'm not sure, but it was on the Daily Stoic pod, which is a good one, that his definition of success is autonomy. Do you, are you autonomous in your life and career? If the answer is yes, you're successful. If the answer is no, you are not successful despite the money or fame or whatever you may have. So do you feel autonomous? Give me an example of someone who feels completely autonomous, just so I understand the measuring stick. Well, like Ryan Holiday said on his pod that he feels successful because he's autonomous. Well, no, he's saying that he's always, you know, he can, he, he, he now, like his best days in his career are the days when he doesn't have anything on his schedule. He can go pick up the kids from school. He can get his writing done because he's not attached anything to the money. Where when he's got businesses and things, meetings all day, even, even he said when he's got his big speaking engagements, which is where the money comes from, he's lost his autonomy and that is not as successful for him. There's a probably a lot more layers to it that I don't yeah, understand because I'm mean, an idiot and I just listen to him no, and no, he's but, smart and I'm dumb. But, but I feel like there is something to say about autonomy with, I'm bringing that up to say these guys, the Zuckerbergs and the must of the world, I don't know that they're addicted to the apps that they want you to be addicted to. I don't know that they are. They might be, but I don't know. I think that they have more autonomy than we think. I don't think Musk think. has autonomy. I mean, he can if he wants, but like, isn't, I mean, he's he's him, right? So his day is, we can't even fathom what his day is, no. right? So how does he have autonomy? I, I don't have autonomy then. I don't. I'm So then therefore, the Stoics definition would say that there's not, or that, that then you don't have success. If you, if you don't attach it, if you got to get money out of the equation, which is tough to do because we all I need mean, money. You, you got to support yourself. You got to support your life. Families and, yeah. But I, but I guess it would be good to have not, to, I guess it would I be wish a I nice goal to have more autonomy. Yeah, I have six jobs. Right. Right. There's no autonomy. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know that you're not only you're doing all this. The I podcast, also make custom cupcakes. Exactly. Uh, I, I do custom exactly. cakes. Exactly. You have that, and then you have your the the gas station. The gas station, the custom cakes that you actually pump at. Most people know the two pods, the solo touring, the group touring, the the, the development, the, the the production company, and then the show, and then when it offshoots of that show, they don't know about the gas station. And right. my love for Fondant. Right. Fondant. And then I saw, um, I'll say it now because I think you told me you got fired. You were working at the Staples right there off Highland Boulevard. Because you know what? It's Staples is fun to work at. It was. Yeah, I remember the first time I went into a Staples and I was going up and down the aisles. And I just love office supplies in abundance. Right. And I love the variation of office supplies at my fingertips. 100%. And I didn't think that I could purchase everything. And I said, how do I... How do I keep around this? Right. And then I applied for a job, and they hired me right away. They hired you right away. Yeah, yeah. They knew who you were. Yeah. Um, now, going back to the apartment, mm -hmm. I all, let me tell you before, because I know we move. got sidetracked, but, through, but let me just tell you, I had, Can I have the house, I have the, what I'm finding is, is we have a lot of space we're not utilizing, A. Mm -hmm. B, we have a lot of times where the kids are sitting in their own little spaces, Jazz and I are sitting in our own little spaces, and or, or when we're together, we're together in one room watching a movie like we just mm -hmm. saw Guardians of the Galaxy 3 last night, loved it, good movie. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I'd like to see seven or eight of. I don't need any more Fast and the Furious, as I get it, you drive, but the yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, there's other, gar there's other galaxies to guard. Dude, did you see Extraction 2? Extraction 2 is sick. Did you see it? Yes. It was mind-blowing. Chris Helmsworth gets the shit beat out of him again. Yeah. I love Extraction 2. I love any Chris Helmsworth Did you movie. watch that movie with your jaw open, right? Yeah, it was sick. It was insane how they did that. You know a movie I just saw, too, on Netflix? That's an old movie. came out in 2000. Traffic with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Don Cheadle. I've never seen Traffic yeah, before. Yeah, like the... Like, oh, you mean the drug movie? Drug movie. Yeah, I never yeah. saw it. Was it Crash? That's what I thought you meant. That was another good movie. No, yeah. is that what Alicia Silverstone? I don't know. 
Um, it was an ensemble cast, a, James Spader possibly. Yeah, Alicia is uh, one of those names where it's hard to know. Do you want me to say it as Alicia or Alicia? Yeah, but that's whatever. It's neither Alicia. here nor there. Uh, <clears throat> So but you will take we the have kids the to house. a new school. We take and then and then we find most of our day is maintaining the house, right? Which is whatever. And then we kind of also feel like we have all this space that we're not necessarily using. And what happened is, is we have the pool, we have the yard, we've brought the amenities to our house, but our children are not socializing as much with other children as we'd want them to because we have no driver motivation to take them to the park when we have it all it's a right real there. Thing. It's a real so thing. we living in it now, it doesn't matter if the house is on Staten Island, West Chester, whatever. The only way that it would make a difference if, if that house was within walking distance to a park in a community, we might feel a bit different, but it's not. And that's why, and that, see, are you considering a move to a home that checks those boxes or right, right back to urban life? We want to go to, we want to try to find the middle ground and try to get a, well, nice, it's urban, bigger, suburban, rural, and right? We're in we suburban. We're in suburban. That's middle. So we would want, so we would want, we would want an urban. You want like a house on, on like, on like uh, Avenue of the Americas? Exactly. We want an urban, we want an <laughs> urban neighborhood with a suburban feel. And we think we found it. Brooklyn. Oh, you've already started looking? Well, the, the problem is, the problem is you when came you came from that, you came from Bay Ridge. Yes. That's so it. that's kind of, and so we think we found like a nice apartment, but again, it, cause the thing we have to get past is the children, right? Is do they, they don't want to go. Right. But but they didn't want to go from Bay Ridge to Staten Island. So we're at that point where it's like we're still making decisions for them. Yeah. And we're starting to trying to think, like, are we taking the kids out of a really good environment to do what we want <sighs> to do? Really or is tough, this better yeah. for them? Yeah. It's because there's no gun to our head to move or not move. Yeah, they love it. They have their lot. You know, they've only been there for a year, though. We've only been there for 18 months. Yeah. But it's still at the point where. You know, when you talk to the elders, they're like, you should, but they're still young enough where it's like, all it takes is for your kids to like, they're going to be upset. But then it's like yeah. my 12 year old stepson, he meets one girl. My right. middle daughter meets one friend. Right. The baby is two. So she's, you know, whatever she does. Right. She's shitting her pants. She's literally shitting and pissing and her you diaper and throwing it at her parents. People about this. I've talked to, I've talked to elders. Her, I've talked to my elders. Yeah. And I even brought in some native American ancestors that I don't even know yeah. that I, 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 I did. Uh, I had to make some cameos for me I know just what, to get advice. I know what goofing around like a couple of, a couple of silly gooses, but uh, Which is what, what, we are. what you're saying though is, is, is genuinely a very tough situation to be in, to know if you're going to make the right decision for the children, for your lives and for the children. Because here's the thing too, you want to be by support systems, right? So my, that's the thing. That's we love thing. Staten Island, I, I, yeah. but we, if we, I leave there, I'm, I remove myself from all support. My father and, and who used to live there now lives in Florida. It's as far away in New York city as you can be from where my mother lives. Like it is, it is the opposite side of the five boroughs right. and Jasmine's mother kind of, she will come anywhere. So, so, so we're like, we're, what support system are we living near on the island right now? We're literally on an island. Right. Sometimes we feel that way yeah. because we didn't grow up there. And a lot of our friends who, who we've met there are all beautiful people. We have not met one bad person yet. They're, right. they're all beautiful people. A lot of that, they are from Staten Island and they, or their friend groups went to Staten Island and then they followed where we are just kind of like, we're not. Right. We're not, you know, we and have you guys as friends, of sure. course, but, but you know how it is, busy sure. schedules, whatever. So we're well, like, what, what are we, you know. Rosa was thinking about moving there. Maybe that'll change your mind. So then I'm going to, then I'm going to actually put the house for sale today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, it's a bummer. It's an interesting you, thing. You have to just cut this ties on this in your brain. But like, for me, I'd be like, oh, I just lived through construction. Yes. That's the thing. I, I sacrificed. But you can't. You well, that, that, that I, I did live through because I lived in my yeah, basement. Yeah, but you got to go how you feel today. Who but, cares? And, 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 and the, 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 the real estate agent who we know who's a personal friend was like, look, because even, even the thought of a move is like mind-numbing yeah. how much stress that is and yeah. whatever. And they were like, listen, just for that, just for that, if you want to, you know, have an, you know, do as much of it as you can, but- if you have the means to pay a little bit extra where they'll pack things up for you, then just do that and yeah. go, and just have them set it up in the new place. Go. Don't even be there. Don't try. Try to. Rel now, I know not everyone could do that. I don't even know if I could afford this whole full white glove service thing that that. But 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 it's an option. You so don't. You started batting around locations. You went and looked. 
we went and looked because we went and looked because we were like, you know what? Let's just see. Let's see how we feel. And here's the interesting thing. Here's the interesting thing that sometimes you just have to do it to see. We, there was one apartment that we really liked, but there's issues with it in the sense of, you know, you have to need a bit of renovation. It's also like in a co-op board. So you have to like do some things where it's like, it's not as easy. And when the architect, cause we just had a friend who was an architect when the architect came and kind of was saying, he's not sure if this could happen for this place. It was interesting to talk to Jasmine about that. She was like, I started to feel very upset that it wasn't maybe going to work with that place. So she was like, that's telling me that like we wanted to be here. Oh. And then when we went back to Staten Island, we still come in our house. And we're, like like said yesterday, we were watching the movie. We we're like, we love like, look at how beautiful our house is. Look we at how great this things, is. Yeah. But then when we woke up this morning, yeah. we were like, oh, shit. Yeah. The movie's over. Yeah, yeah. We're out of that room. Yeah, yeah. Now we're back to the house owns us again. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I got, I got, I got tired of living in buildings though too. Like the co-ops are such bullshit. There's yes. the board, and everyone knows everyone's business, and you got to go through them for everything, and you got to like, there's no just walking right into your house. You park in a parking lot or wherever on the street, and then you got to take all your packages up and down. And right. That. There's just thing. There are pros and cons to both. That that gets annoying. In my head, I'm like, I just would like to pull into privacy and serenity. Right. So those were my two paramount things that I was thinking. Right. So the, obviously I have that. With, I mean, to be able to pull up literally to my front door in Staten yeah. Island is tough. This this new place, it, you know, you yeah, it's you're, like you said, it's like a garage and it's it's a whole different life. Yeah. And I remember when I was living in my apartment, even I would get angry. Like, I got to wait for the fucking elevator again. Yeah. You know, like you start to get frustrated. But but you start to then also feel like with Staten Island, like there's sometimes where I'm like, man, I got to sit in. Sometimes I feel like wherever I go, I got to leave the island to get there normally, you know, yeah, so yeah. that there's there. Here's the thing. I probably am much more used to that than you. Because, because you were born and raised. I've been doing it my whole life. I've, I've, it's, it's just like, I know it's just a necessity. Right. That I have to do. Right. So, right. yeah. Well, All what right. can you do? Who knows what I'll do? I'll tell you what's good news is I'm not swimming in the beaches because if you swim on the beaches, you will get beaten by a shark if you live in the New York area. It's just what it is. Babe. There's Everybody's been, getting bit by sharks. Long Island shark attacks on record setting pace after five swimmers bit so far this summer. I am going there. I was in Long Island uh, last month for a week. I'm going there in a few days for a week, and I'm in there in August for one week. The place I'm going next week, just a uh, shark just bit somebody. Will you go the in specific the, place? Will you go in the ocean water? I, I kind of won't now. I don't think. Like, I'm, what am I? Why would I? Why? Why would why, I? Why are the sharks eating everybody now? Are their fasting windows different? I, I, <laughs> I don't know why they're eating everybody. They're, they're, the sharks are eating they're everybody. They're off the sharks. I By the way. The, the water is getting warmer maybe? I'm yes. making that up, but I don't know. By the way, can we watch movie trailers on here or we can't, Pimp? Um, I, I don't know. The, the, the movie trailer for the new movie, Napoleon, the historical movie, Napoleon, with Joaquin Phoenix plays Napoleon, is the best movie trailer I've ever seen in my entire life, and I'd like to watch it with y'all. Okay. <laughs> 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 Can we do it now? Well, we don't want to. We don't want the whole thing to get ripped down because of this. That's the thing. Okay, so maybe we'll watch it off air. But this, this, I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. I've been waiting for them to make a movie about Napoleon. Okay. I've been literally waiting because his Knock story is fascinating. Off, Napoleon. Yeah. Wow. France, seventeen ninety three. This movie is sick. The storming of the Bastille. They. It, this has Oscar written all over it. Right. right? Is it Apple? When does it come out, pimp? I now, love why, it. Why is the eggplant Napoleon called that? What do you mean? The eggplant Napoleon. What's an eggplant Napoleon? It's an eggplant stack. It's a, like eggplant, fresh mozzarella, beef steak, tomato, eggplant, fresh mozzarella. Why is Napoleon? Top, a little basil, a little sauce. I think oh, maybe because is it like um, eggplant Napoleon? Um, Maybe because um, maybe it has nothing to do with that Napoleon, because it maybe it's from Napolitan, Italy. Eggplant Napoleon name is not really why. Maybe why is it called? What do you know about Napoleon? You would be surprised at how little I know about how much. Right. Can I ask you some questions, some I, history questions that I was going to ask people on the street, babe? I am. Let's see history, how many you can get right. History. Right. Is my number one worst education. This is only second to geography. Okay. This is. I mean, I'm sorry. No, ge it's, geography is second. But let's. I'm see good at math. 
I'm good at like science. Let's see how many get right. This is a thing I want to go around and start filming. You know, I have a show, Chris Trees, where I talk yes. about a little history. I want to go on the street and ask Chris Trees questions. I, 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 I revel at your historical knowledge, but your ability to, to store your historical knowledge. Well, oh. The reason that I am not good at history is math is one thing. You learn the technique, you apply the technique. History is you got to remember all this stuff. And I honestly, I've my whole life, I've had severe ADHD, and I cannot retain that well, kind of Well, it's stuff. what you're passionate about. For me, yeah. I think about, you know, like, we're all connected even through our past. So for me, it's amazing to look at Napoleon in 1793 and be like, what was, what was life like then? Were people having the same problems? Were people doing their versions of complaining? It is fascinating. Were they thinking about an apartment versus a house? Were they the same issues? And yeah. I think the answer is yes. Yes. So let me... Um, so here's a history question, uh, quiz, uh, uh, Christory quiz. Sorry, if easy. How many states are in the U.S.? Fifty. Good. Who shot and killed Abraham Lincoln? John Wilkes Booth. See, you're already a lot of people. That's those are those are. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Who fought in the Civil War? What do you mean, who? Who? What? The North and South. The North and South. A mm-hmm. lot of people don't know that. What city was the first capital of the United States? Uh, was it? Um what city was the very first capital? I feel like I should know that. Was it? Was, uh, they came over to Jamestown, right? Right. And then uh, maybe it was then East Coast. I don't think it was Albany, though. What's your guess? Maybe it's, uh, what's the capital of Massachusetts? Boston. Is it? New York City is the, was the first capital of the United States. It was? It was. Oh, is it? New York City was the first capital of the United States. Yes, but it's not even a capital now. But it was the first. It oh, was the I didn't capital. Know that. What was the name of the ship that first brought the pilgrims to the United States? Well, uh, Santa Maria. The Mayflower. Oh, oh, oh I need to, uh, sure, sure, sure. What that, year, that, that's an easy one. I just what year was same-sex marriage legalized in New York City? Uh, two thousand and eighteen. Uh, two thousand eleven. You're a homophobe. Okay. Um. What? Oh, uh, in New York City. What was the name Not of federally? What was the name of New York City? The questions better. It's man. It's on me. What was the name of New York City before it was called New York City? I feel like I should, oh five ta- five towns or something like that. New Amsterdam. New, before New York. Yeah, New Amsterdam. Right. Yep, yep. So, yep. but you actually know, dude. You know a no, lot. I knew of these. the easy ones, and I got the semi-easy ones wrong but because knew, I didn't pay attention. You knew. You knew. What did I know? I didn't really. Who know was much. the? Who was credited as the first American to walk on the moon? Uh, 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 uh I know, but Buzz Lightyear. No, I know. <laughs> no, I, I know. I know who it is. I know who it is. But you don't. But if we're playing the game, you're not because I'm going to give people money. Buzz choice, I'd whip it out quick. But that's the thing because I'm going to give people money for yeah, winning. It's not Buzz Aldrin. He Neil, was way, way, Neil, Neil Armstrong. Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. I knew that. What for New York, York City? I knew that. For what real, New York that. City Park has a mini version of Francis Arc de Triomphe? What New York? I got to go with Central Park. Washington Square Park. Okay, so you don't know a lot of these. Oh, oh, you mean the? the you mean the? Yeah. Oh the yeah, yeah. The arch. Did yeah. you say an arch? Yeah, I said the Arc de Triomphe. Oh, Arc de Triomphe. That was an easy one. Okay. Um, like Marble Arch in London? Yeah. Yeah. What What was Martin Luther King Jr.'s yeah, original sure. name? Mm. It, multiple choice. Martin Luther King Jr.? Michael. Was Michael it? Michael Luther King. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you would have... Uh, yeah, you... Well, w- the way that I'm going to do it is if you ask... What did, what, what did my, my, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s friends call him? June bug. Really? Yeah. Look it there up. There you go. Look it up. Um, okay. So you did good. You I did didn't good. do well at all. I, I blanked on Neil Armstrong. You, you said Buzz Lightyear, which is, which, yeah. <laughs> which that would be, that would be an answer that would make the clip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Neil, Neil Armstrong is an easy one. I, but who's Neil? Who's the guy who lost a testicle and cheated? Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Okay. All right, right. There you go. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So I, you know, where did we land here? I don't know. You may or may not be moving. I may or not know nothing about history. Right. Uh, don't walk into a crane kick. Don't walk into if a crane you, kick. If you see someone do this, yeah. Take pause. Take pause. And from previous episodes, wisdom. If you want to save the lives of your family and your children, then you should go Amish. Go Amish, which I, I, I really am thinking about doing. I'm not gonna. You know, we. Ha- I know we have to go. I know we have to go. And I'll, I'll just part with this. 
I have been reflecting for real, seriously, and I have been thinking about what you said already, whereas I am flirting with the idea of fully, really for real, I, I had a serious conversation about this, and I don't know how much I can do it, but I'm flirting about the, with the idea of this has been Hey Babe. Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe.